All right, welcome back for week 11 of our Discipleship Character Series Study. This is the Discipleship Character Booklet. It is absolutely free. We'd love to put one into your hands. You can email us at info at fireinactionalloneword.com and we will get one into your hands. If you are a seasoned believer, it is still a great tool for you to use to minister the gospel as we are called to by the Great Commission in every day of our life. And if you are a new believer, it is a tremendous tool to help you understand that all you, you what you've done is you started a race. You've taken the most important step but the race is not over. Now it's a matter of how do I become a follower of Christ? How do I live like the radical believer that I'm called to? How do I live like this individual who is going to make impact with the remainder of my days on this earth before I leave this earth? And that is what this booklet will show you from start to finish. So we'd love to put one in your hands. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us to get one. Um, Today we're going into week 11 and actually I kind of promoted with what I said just a moment ago because when we leave this earth, our days on this earth, we have assignments and we have plans and purposes that God has for us, but someday every one of us will leave this earth and there is one of two places that we will end up and we will end up there for eternity and the, the place I'm going to speak to you about this place is the place we all desire and that place is heaven. There are many who doubt that heaven is a real place. I'm here to tell you God is real and anything God creates is real and God is the creator of and exists in heaven. His spirit obviously roams here around the earth and dwells inside of us. The fullness of his presence is available for us when we reach heaven. Heaven is a real, real existing place. Read through the book of Revelation and you will see it is a real place that one day all who are believers will find themselves in, whether they're caught up in the time of rapture or they find themselves there prior to that when they leave this earth as a believer. That is key. We'll get into that more in just a moment. Um, there are many descriptions of what heaven is like, keywords like. John on his uh, time on the island of Patmos has many different visions and he tries to describe what he's seen in the place known as heaven, and he uses different phrases that would be recognizable to us here on the earth. I say that to help you understand that John uses the word like very often, the appearance of, he says very often, because what he's seeing is a heavenly realm, and what he's seeing he can't truly fully describe to us who dwell here in the earthly realm. So he uses things like appearance of and it is something like because he's trying to uh, give us a simile to what we would be able to recognize here on the earth, yet what he's seeing, he cannot fully describe, he cannot accurately, completely describe because it's too far majestic for him to actually describe. So I say that to help you understand as you read through your word, and as you read especially through Revelation and you see depictions of what heaven is like, understand it's far greater than what John is actually revealing to us. That's powerful and that gets me excited. Um, now today, what I want to share with you very quickly is just a couple of points. Um, one, who will be in heaven and when will we be there? Um, so again, coming from the place of believing in heaven as a real place, there's different religious sects out there that try to teach us different things. There's some that try to teach us, especially that heaven is a place that is numbered for a certain number. But I read Revelation 7, and this is what it says to me. After this, I looked and a multitude too large to count from every nation, tribe, tongue, and people were found standing before the throne and before the Lamb. So if the word tells us the number is too large to count, that tells us there's an incredible, as the word says, great multitude, not a number we can count, but so many that we are, it's, in, it's a number that's uncountable by us. And this is trying to reveal to us that God's plan is so amazing and so far reaching and all we have to do is latch on to it, believe in that and the opportunity to reside with him is there forever and it's available to all, to all. 
Now, Matthew 7 teaches us an incredible point about who will be in heaven. Because when I say to all, many people then assume, well, then that means heaven's going to be my eternal resting place. A lot of times people just believe because someone is their mother, their father, their sister, their brother, their cousin, their best friend, their favorite whatever, that this person or some great celebrity, that this person, when they die, because they were incredible philanthropists and did incredible things for society, that this person resides in heaven. But Matthew 7 reveals to us who actually will enter into the gates. Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he who what does the will of my father who is in heaven will enter. So what is the will of the father? What is the will of God? Well, in its simplest form, the will of God is the word of God. The word of God is obviously the word itself, the Bible from front to finish, Genesis to Revelation. If you trust in and believe in the entirety of the word of God, you are following the will of God. And the will of God teaches us many things. And the will of God teaches us that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of God teaches us that no one can come to the father except through the son. The word of God teaches us that God so loved the world that he gave his only son for us. And him doing that enables us to have the original sin that we cannot eliminate by baptism. We cannot eliminate by baptism as a child. We cannot eliminate because we go to church. We cannot eliminate because we serve at the church. We cannot eliminate because we've got the best voice in the choir. We cannot eliminate because we do incredible acts that people love and that touch people. We can only enter into the gates if we believe in the one who came from heaven and gave his life, his his life on the cross for our sins to erase original sin. That is following the will of God, which we learn and discover from the word of God. And that is how you gain entrance. You don't gain entrance based on what you do. You gain entrance on, by believing in what the son of God came and did for you. Amen. So I share that to also help you understand, you know, when I go out and I share the gospel on the streets and in wherever God calls me to, I run into so many people who, when I ask them that question, do you know where you go when you leave this earth? They'll tell me, well, I think I'm going to heaven or they'll say heaven and I'll ask them why. And they'll say, well, I think I'm going to go because of this or that, or because I did this and did that. And red flags shoot up all over the place immediately because they're missing the point. The word of God in 1 John 5, 13 says that these things were written so that we, we may know, those of us who believe may know that we have eternal life. God wants you to know and have security in your heart right here and now that though you don't deserve heaven, none of us deserve it, that you can gain access, not by doing something, not by earning a gift, but by receiving the gift of the blood of Jesus shed on the cross at Calvary for you, for me, for all of mankind. That is all that it takes. And it's so challenging for man because we want to always control the situation and act as if it's something that we do that can save our souls. It's believing in what someone else already did to save you. So that is who enters the gates. Now, when do you enter heaven can be answered for us. Second Corinthians five. Paul says this in the first verse for we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is when we die and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven an eternal body made for us by God himself and not by human hands. So the body we are in is corruptible. It will die. It will perish. And the only body that will be able to reside and live eternally in heaven is an incorruptible one. And again, we already explained who gets to go. You take on that body when your time comes. And that is when the entrance into heaven comes into place. But understand this, until you get there, you're called to bring heaven to the earth in how you live. John 17, 3 says this, that eternal life is knowing the father and the son whom he sent. Meaning if you know Jesus Christ right now, 
You can live as if heaven is here right now. And that's what we're called to do. We're called to bring down heaven to the earth by how we live, by how we treat our families, treat those that we work with, go to school with, live life amongst, and even the perfect stranger that we just meet today. That is how we're called to live and drawing heaven to this earth, not awaiting our time to be taken there, but bring it here. That is his desire. That is his plan. So I hope that blesses you. I hope that touches you. Uh, today we discussed heaven and we discussed who goes. Next week we'll discuss where people go when heaven is not their eternal home. Because no matter who you are, when this body perishes, your soul resides somewhere for eternity. So we'll touch base on that next week for uh, session 12. God bless you. And as always, remember, live truth and share truth.